Welcome to Don Bosco Channel YouTube. My name is Father Pat Angelucci. I'm the administrator here at the parish of St. John Bosco in Porchester. In these weeks, we have covered a series of talks on our Rector Major Strena, Give Me to This Drink. And in this Strena, the Rector Major focuses on the image of the Samaritan woman with Jesus and he asks us to seriously look at our attitudes towards listening, discerning, and accompanying. In these past five weeks, we have looked at each of those areas. In our last video, we applied it to the family. And in our last video today, the last in the series of six, we want to apply it to young people. And as we take these three points, listening, discerning, and accompanying, and try to apply it to young people of our time, of our world, of our culture, I could not help but reflect on some words given to us by our Holy Father, Pope Francis, in his latest apostolic exhortation on the call to holiness in today's world. Gaudete e exultate. And in this beautiful letter, which is well worth reading, the Holy Father makes this comment. All of us, but especially the young, are immersed in a culture of zapping. We can navigate simultaneously on two or more screens and interact at the same time with two or three virtual scenarios. Without the wisdom of discernment, we can easily become prey to every passing trend. The Holy Father presents this to us and mentions it as a problem, especially for the young. That the young today in our society can become prey to every passing trend. And one of the reasons for that very simply is because at the basis of all discernment, which will lead to accompaniment, is listening. And it is very hard to listen when, as he says, we are constantly zapping, going from one thing to another, texting, watching, speaking, doing all of these things at once. And so we have no attention span to be still and to listen. And at the heart of all discernment is listening, listening. And so one of the first challenges that we have today as we look at our young people in our society is how can we help them to listen? How can we help them to be still enough for some time in order that they can open their hearts and their minds to listen to what is being said? How sad it is at times when you see a family sitting together and in order to keep the child quiet Mom or dad will turn on some video on the phone and give it to the kid so the kid is keeping busy and doing something else instead of listening, instead of participating, instead of being an active member in what is going on in the family. How sad it is many times when we see so many of our young people walking with earphones in their, with earphones in their ears unable to pay attention and to listen to anything that is going on around them and mom or dad are screaming at them to take out the garbage or to turn off the TV or to do their homework and they can't hear because so much is going into, into their minds. This is the society in which they live and so the biggest challenge for us then today is how to get young people to listen. Perhaps one of the ways that we have to look at is how can we use their technology in order to be able to help them to listen and to listen more attentively. How can we get them to be still, to listen? And one of the key ways to do that, obviously, is prayer. Challenging our young people to be silent for a few moments. Challenging our young people to listen to God's word. That means praying with our young people, bringing our young people to church with us. That means sitting with our young people and praying with them at home 
mom and dad and the family. And it doesn't have to be a lot of words. It can simply be a simple Lexio Divina. Let's listen to a word of God and let's all of us just be still for a few minutes and hear what the Holy Spirit wants to say to us in this word. How can we help our young people and save our young people from what our Holy Father calls this prey to every passing trend that comes by? Listening and then helping our young people to discern. And again, it's important because so many times our young people don't want to confront the realities of their own lives. It's not uncommon to find a young person who it seems that God may be calling to religious life or to priesthood or even to married life. But they have their own plan and they're so busy making their own plans that they don't have time to listen what is the Holy Spirit saying to us? How many young people, how many young adults in our society today enter marriage without really thinking about whether or not marriage is what they should be doing. <laughs> but they just enter into marriage because that's what we do when we're a certain age. And there's no discernment taking place with them, with the couple, with God's Word speaking to them as they enter into this relationship. How do we help them to confront the reality of is this going to be good for you? Is this what God's will is for you? Because happiness will only be found in God's will. And then obviously accompanying our young people in the decisions that they make. I have here with me an image of Mama Margaret, Don Bosco's mother. She was one who truly accompanied Don Bosco. And in her and her relationship with Don Bosco, I think we find a perfect example of this listening, discerning, and accompanying. Don Bosco was confronted with a real challenge when he was thinking about his future life. And one of the challenges was, should he become a religious priest or should he become a diocesan priest? And so much of everything that was being said to him was, if you become a diocesan priest, you'll receive a salary, you'll be able to help your poor mother so that she can have an easier life as she gets older, so that you can care for her and help her. Don Bosco was really struggling with this. And he was listening to the reality around him. He was listening to what people were saying to him. He was listening to what even some of his fellow, some of the fellow priests were saying to him about his relationship with his mother, Mama Margaret. And what happens? Don Bosco sits with Mama Margaret and talks to her. And we have this image of the two of them talking together, really trying to listen to each other. And he tells his mother what is going on in his heart. And his mother, listening carefully, leaves him free. Another problem of so many parents today. We want to make the decisions for our children. No, Mama Margaret leaves John Bosco free. John, you have to make the decision whether or not you'll be a diocesan priest or a religious priest. But I can only tell you this. Don't become a diocesan priest simply because you're worried about me and making money in order to help me. If you become a priest with money, I'll never enter into your house. My shadow will never pass the doorpost of your house. Don Bosco listened to that. Those words were not easy for him to hear, but he listened and he prayed and then he made a decision. And he made a decision to become a diocesan priest. And Mama Margaret, knowing what she said to him, accompanying him every step of the way, helping him in, in his discernment, helping him in his education, encouraging him, supporting him, praying for him, being with him. And when Don Bosco realized what God was calling him to do in his work for the young, Mama Margaret, left behind the life that she was comfortable with and went to Turin to be Mama Margaret to Don Bosco and his boys in Turin. 
This is truly a perfect example of a mother who accompanies her young her child, a young person, to listen, to discern, so that God's will might be fulfilled. We're doing our last video here in front of this beautiful stained glass window of Don Bosco as a young boy helping his friends, his life's mission, helping other young people. And we're doing it also with this beautiful image of Mama Margaret before us, the woman who helped Don Bosco. As we come to the end of our series, it's important for us not simply to take these words that Father Angel has given to us and just study them, but it's important for us to apply them. And tonight, I think, in the person of Don Bosco, and especially in the person of his mother, Mama Margaret, we see the application of what it means to live this trend in our everyday lives. Thank you very much for joining us in these weeks. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you again.